there is here in Africa there is a, a notion that forex is a scam and mainly there are many people who are selling out lifestyle showing up showing off watches ferraris big houses and they tend to you know show people that that is the way forex traders live that is the mm -hmm. way forex traders are but looking at your life and all the certificates that you have mm -hmm. all the achievements that you have you're not really showing up that lifestyle do you think scalpers are gamblers oh yes 100 percent now there has been the bots that are also in the feed. <laughs> what do you have to say about them? Oh. Let's also talk about uh, something that I also see other influencer traders do. And I mean, they, they tell you, you know, I'm, I'm doing account management. Mm -hmm. And once I do account management, uh, I, you'll get 50% profit, I'll get 50%. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's, it, it, it's something that could work uh, for, for, for new people in the Forex industry? I mean, one might argue and say, you know, it's, it's close to the same, uh, it's close to whatever, you know, prop farms are doing, you know. You know, they're giving you money, then you, you're getting a percentage of it. Would, do, what, do you, what do you have to say about Yeah, that? theoretically, like, it might work, but mm -hmm. again, you need to find somebody who, like, can manage your capital and manage your money, mm -hmm. and this person has to be, like, a long-term track record, mm -hmm. right? Again, you've, there are not many people out there who can show you, like, a long-term track record, mm -hmm. right? Like... Think about one of the trading influencers that you know. Can they show you if they ask you, hey, can you give me a verified statement over six months, six months? Most probably not. Like, Hello, everyone. My name is Presenter Ali. Of course, today we are going to be having an amazing conversation with the band and FTMO all-time, you know, record holder 10 years fully uh, 10 years in trading and of course it's a very interesting conversation because many people normally tell me every time they see a forex trader around kenya or around you know just tell me presenter ali just bring him so that we can have a word with him you can uh, hear what he has to, to talk to us about and today we have a, such a, a special guest uh, but before I just talk too much, please introduce yourself. <laughs> Ali, first of all, thank you for having me. I mean, all this was very short notice, yeah. but thank you for uh, figuring, it out, figure, figuring it out and, yeah. you know, reaching out. And I'm so happy to be here with you. Yeah, thank uh, you also for coming. Yeah, you no, know, many no. people invite them and probably sometimes <laughs> they don't come. No, thank you so much. Yeah. So, yeah, just a brief introduction. As you said, my name is uh, Bernd Pinsky. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually 12 years into trading, wow. but 10 years full time. Okay. So I'm 40 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a family, mm -hmm. a wife, a nine year old daughter. So mm -hmm. basically I with trading 10 years full time. I provide for my family mm -hmm. and um, I'm the... That's where people might get to know me or mm -hmm. people know me from is that I'm the FTMO all-time record, record holder, holder, which is FTMO is the biggest Forex prop firm in the world. And yes. I'm their all-time record holder mm -hmm. with 120 leaderboard appearances. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. And only in one and a half years, actually. Not like in five years time span. Actually, wow. only in one and a half years. Yes. Um, so I'm really proud of on that, uh, that achievement, actually. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I manage in total, I manage $4 million in prop firm capital. Wow. I consider myself a multi-asset trader. I'm mm -hmm. trading everything, Forex, stocks, and also futures. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm the CEO of a licensed investment consultancy in Dubai. We are regulated by the UAE government. And mm -hmm. with that um, investment consultancy, licensed investment consultancy, we are offering trading education. Wow, that's crazy. There's actually so much to talk about. But basically, one of the things that I'm quite interested to know is how did you stumble upon Forex You know, for you to be able to trade for 12 years? So actually, uh, I started Forex only recently, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So I started off trading stocks. So my mm -hmm. education back in the days, mm -hmm. I, was, I was learning how to trade stocks. Mm -hmm. And from stocks, I went into futures. Mm -hmm. And my whole life, I think this is primarily where my edge is coming from. My okay. edge in the market yeah. is by trading futures mm -hmm. and understanding the underlying a asset mm -hmm. that basically drives price in general. Mm -hmm. And then at some point of time, I went into forex as well so into mm -hmm. the cfd market okay. so just for the people who don't understand mm -hmm. cfds are contracts of difference so you trade this through your forex broker so it's basically forex mm -hmm. but these cfds are just derived from the underlying asset which is the futures mm -hmm. i know it's very technical but yes. what people have to understand is that most forex products mm -hmm. are just derivatives and these derivatives are derived from the futures market and mm -hmm. that's why i'm saying my edge is coming from understanding the underlying asset which is the futures wow uh, one of the reasons actually i've also you know seen it important or uh, to, to bring you on board to have this conversation is mainly 
there is here in Africa there is a, a notion that forex is a scam and mainly there are many people who are selling out lifestyle showing up showing off watches ferraris big houses and they tend to you know show people that that is the way forex traders live that is the mm -hmm. way forex traders are but looking at your life and all the certificates that you have mm -hmm. all the achievements that you have you're not really showing up that lifestyle no i actually live a pretty humble life yeah <laughs> um i think for myself um mm -hmm. but you're absolutely right so but it's basically not only in kenya where mm -hmm. people think i would not just say f that people think f forex is a scam mm -hmm. in general that that notion still exists that mm -hmm. trading is gambling right yes. or that you cannot become successful in trading over the long term mm -hmm. and this is a big problem in our industry and what you just mentioned that mm -hmm. there are some a lot of trading influencers let i call them inf trading influencers because okay. these are i would say they are not real traders mm -hmm. out there who are selling the dream by mm -hmm. hey what you can accomplish in a short period of time by driving these expensive sports cars mm -hmm. showing these uh, expensive watches living this crazy lifestyle traveling from one place to another and you know just uh living this super expensive lifestyle but mm -hmm. this is not the truth yeah. right mm -hmm. um so people should be always critical, especially when they see stuff like this on social media. This is really important. Okay. What is one way you can actually tell someone who wants to dive into Forex, a beginner mm. per se, you know, what is one way to tell that, you know, this is a legit uh, trader and this is a scammer? So I believe that in general, when people have to show their lifestyle over mm -hmm. their real trading results, mm -hmm. it's already scamming by itself, wow. right? <laughs> so yeah. when people really focus only when these trading influencers are focusing on lifestyle only and mm -hmm. you don't see literal results, mm -hmm. then, um, then this is a scam, yeah. right, uh, from the get-go. Mm -hmm. The problem is that nowadays that you can, you know, I could now, you know, get out my mobile and show you, you know, some profits that I made. Mm -hmm. But this is not credible, okay, right? Okay. Because you have to show like long-term success in the market, long-term results. Mm -hmm. So that's where I basically show all my FTM, right? All my FTM certificates yes. that are third party approved, right? Okay. I have so many prop firm certificates mm -hmm. um, that I collected throughout my prop firm journey mm -hmm. and also what I what I use is basically I manage another two million dollars in mm -hmm. prop firm capital from mm -hmm. a prop firm mm -hmm. um, from a private prop firm mm -hmm. and these results are all third party approved mm -hmm. third party verified wow. right so I do everything mm -hmm. to showcase basically trustworthiness mm -hmm. credibility mm -hmm. and real results and I believe that every real trader out there especially mm -hmm. if you offer education mm -hmm. right that's yes. that's the part right yeah. you can do whatever you want mm -hmm. if you don't offer education mm -hmm. but once you start offering education or mm -hmm. any kind of trading service mm -hmm. you have to show third party approved um, or third party verified results and if somebody doesn't do that mm -hmm. Why? Question why, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you're successful, you can do that, yeah, right? Sure. And that's why I'm doing it. Well, I was actually about to ask the same in regards to the education and the conversation that we had earlier mm -hmm. that most people normally say that, yes, if you are trading and uh, you're making out of, uh, some money out of it, mm -hmm. why would you go you know, to teach other people mm -hmm. how to trade? Yes, this is also um, a good question. Um, and it's a bit sad to be honest that mm -hmm. you know since that industry has just this scammy perception yes, that yes. i feel sometimes <clears throat> i have to justify for that industry yes. right for okay. the industry as a whole mm -hmm. so um but i would say you know offering trading education you offer a service to the public and it's nice. like offering any other service yeah. right i mean if you are a law consultant you know mm -hmm. you're, you you provide a service if mm -hmm. you're like a doctor you provide a service mm -hmm. right you, it's like just a norm you're just a service provider mm -hmm. and at the end of the day mm -hmm. um we are offering really like skill development okay. right so so people can really learn how to trade professionally mm -hmm. and everything that we do mm -hmm. so for instance our it's our licensed investment consultancy is not only me. I'm not a one-man show. These mm -hmm. are like twenty. We are more than twenty employees wow. in that in that in that office in Dubai, right? Mm -hmm. And we have em employees across the world as mm -hmm. well. So we are proper company, mm -hmm. right? Um, and and at the end of the day, for me personally, it's really the way how I trade mm -hmm. is 
I have so much time on my hands. Mm -hmm. I do my analysis throughout the weekend. I place my trades during the week. I only need like, I call it set and forget and get a live trading approach. So wow, set okay. and forget and get a live trading approach. Set and forget and, and get, get a live. live. Exactly, okay. because I, I follow the swing trading approach. So my mm -hmm. execution time frame is usually daily charts, meaning I only need 15 minutes to 30 minutes a day to mm -hmm. go through my trading routine, mm -hmm. you know, and do trade management, place maybe some orders throughout the weeks. Yes. But the main work is done on the weekend. So wow. I have so much time on my hands. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just being a trader is also like a bit boring. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and for me, I also feel it's important to build like some kind of like-minded community. Mm -hmm. For me, it was always important to have like a discussion from trader to trader, from professional to professional. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's trading, it's by itself, mm -hmm. by yourself. It's a lonely business. You wow. can imagine, right? You're self-employed as a trader, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have, doing you have, everything. You have nobody to talk to, and you yeah. know you cannot talk, you know, about trading with your wife. Yeah. <laughs> no offense, but yeah. <laughs> you need some professionals to have like proper discussions, you know, mm -hmm. especially if you're passionate about. So it's building mm -hmm. like a like-minded community for mm -hmm. me as well, mm -hmm. and also what is really important for me is like building a legacy, wow. right? Building something that um, people can remember me on, and mm -hmm. also you know something that like is there for future generations. Oh. So that was my main motivation as well when we um, launched Online Trading Campus. So all these points basically, um, yes, there is obviously always for education, there's always cost involved, right? There's, wow. Crazy. You, 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 I mean, you might agree with me or yeah. not, but there's nothing for free in this world, That's right? True. Especially, That's true. Especially something with value. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Uh, social media, speaking of social media, I mean, social media has been here for a while. And uh, we see many Forex traders launch their careers on social media or begin trading just from seeing people on social media. But your story is quite different uh, in the fact that you started now getting into trading. And then right now you've just uh, the other day, you know, got into social media to just try to, to show people how, you know, Forex trading mm -hmm. is done. You know, uh, you've achieved a lot and you've not done this through social media. You've done it, you know, away from social media. Is it that you shied, you know, from being on social media or what exactly happened if, uh, that made you not be on social media? And also what exactly happened that made you come back <laughs> to social media? <laughs> yes, you're right. And I think that's why people, you know, they, they, they like what I do and yes. they value my content because mm -hmm. they know wow. exactly what you say that mm -hmm. I'm don't I didn't get popular through social media yes. in a way I got popular through my res like people got to know me through my results wow. on FTMO right yes. mm -hmm. and this is where I basically then slowly went more viral mm -hmm. like when you know my first FTMO uh, mm -hmm. results pop, popped up and you know I Post. I always had Instagram, by the way, yeah. but I never really posted stuff on okay, it. So okay. once I started to post, you know, slowly all my certificates, mm -hmm. you know, then I also became more viral. It okay. was like more, more like a natural transition, basically, yeah. and not forced. And mm -hmm. this is really important, right? Mm -hmm. I was not pushing out content for the sake of pushing out constant co yes. content. Mm -hmm. I was just put, uh, uh, pushing out content that was basically accomplishments that I've achieved from, wow. from trading. And then obviously slowly mm -hmm. people started recognizing it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's what makes me also, you know, trustworthy for the people and credible mm -hmm. for the people that mm -hmm. they know, Hey, mm -hmm. I was behind the scenes, so to speak for like, yeah, almost a decade. And then I yeah. just, you know, last year in March, mm -hmm. I basically started my YouTube journey, yeah. right. Which is another discussion by itself. <laughs> yeah. But, um, um, Mm -hmm. But um, more or less, it's uh, yeah, it's been such a great journey, mm -hmm. and uh, I now I just because for me, I want to really now set a standard in this industry, wow. right? Because as 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 you said, right, there's so many people don't know who to trust in this in this That's industry. The thing. That's, the That's the biggest the thing. problem, right? Yeah. We can also come back and really quickly discuss why that is, right? Mm -hmm. Because in this business, there's no accreditation, yes. no certification system. Yes. Everybody can go out there True. and, you know, call themselves a trader mm -hmm. and then, you know, even offer, you know, a service, trading education. Everybody can do that. Yes. And this is like so special in this industry that mm -hmm. doesn't exist in any other industry mm -hmm. that it's like there's no accreditation system that you can go to. Okay, this guy 
is certified. He can provide what he's pro providing. He is credible. Mm -hmm. In trading, everybody can do everything, right? Yes. This makes it a little bit, to be honest, wild, wild west. Yeah. So, um, and um, to be honest, like, sorry for my language, this really pisses me off. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's <laughs> it like, really yeah. pisses me off. Yeah. And uh, um, this undermines kind of, I take this in a way personal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because I have to justify for their wrongdoings mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. So I really want to set a new standard in the industry. I know it's like far-fetched to say he, want, mm -hmm. he wants to set a new standard, mm -hmm. but I want to showcase, you know, like, what you need to show like, hey, I'm a credible trader, I'm trustworthy, here are my results, all third party verified. And if you don't have that, you're not allowed, you, you should not be allowed to offer any kind of service and even like talk about trading. Wow, it's really hard to, you know, uh, come up with regulations when it comes to that. But then uh, I want us to have this conversation in that uh, social media is an industry by itself industry and by also itself. trading is an industry by <laughs> yeah. itself. And you trying, you know, to, to, to work through the two. How has it been? Yeah, I'm juggling right now yeah, yeah. a little bit both, right? And thankfully with my set and forget and get a live trading approach, yeah. I can really focus a lot on the on, on social media as mm -hmm. well. Because mm -hmm. it's, as, I mean, you know it better than me that mm -hmm. this is like a different profession. It's a different skill. It's a mm -hmm. different science by itself. Mm -hmm. So just making, you know, good content, good content, like valuable content, it doesn't mean this get any views. Yes, right? that's so the thing. This is like a huge process and I'm still learning, obviously, mm -hmm. and it's, but it's an interesting journey, mm -hmm. but I'm still like in that learning process where I need to understand how kind of the social media works mm -hmm. because I want to get up this content out to as many people as possible. Yes. But sometimes I feel like I, I hit roadblocks because it's not getting enough views that I would like a yes, yes. video to have because mm -hmm. I, think that when I put out content, I put out content with value, yes. right? So I would not, would never put out content if it doesn't have a certain value, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But then, you know, sometimes you're like, of course, with social media, you know how it is. You look mm -hmm. at your YouTube studio app and you see like the ranking every one to time. 10. And yeah, like, I know. Every time, right? It's getting addictive. This yes, YouTube studio yes. App, right? like, like, and, and it's, 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 it's so scary when you, you yeah. upload a video and then after an hour, it's like nine out of 10, yeah, seven exactly, out of 10. Yeah, exactly, right? You're like, I thought this was the best, you know? And, 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 and you know, it <laughs> just happened to me this weekend. Yes. I, I published this, this. I was in Kenya, but yeah. you know, everything was automized. So the mm -hmm. YouTube video was published and it was like a one out of, it was like 10 out of 10. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's like so disappointing. You know, yes. it's like for me, it's like more, more, right now, more disappointing than a losing trade. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so much effort in, yes. you put so much effort into that process, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. you, 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 write, you write a script in a way, mm -hmm. um, it goes through like proofreading, mm -hmm. and then you re read your record, you know it, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. then editing process is a long process. Work on the thumbnail, yeah. Uploading, managing everything. Mm -hmm. And then it gets a 10 out of 10, and you're like, bum kind of by the yes so that's why it's like it's a different science um i'm still learning obviously a lot i'm only in the beginning but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm enjoying it i'm enjoying but it. in terms of the rpm it's quite a it's quite a good niche eh? yes yeah yes, it's yeah quite, forex is yeah. quite a it's, it's quite a i mean trading in general it's a good niche but uh i want and, to and uh -huh. sorry and, yes. I'm, I'm, but i'm i'm super appreciative like mm -hmm. the people who watch my content yes yes um the comments they leave like it 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 kind of sometimes really I'm not it makes my day sometimes they are so appreciative mm -hmm. about the value that I'm giving them for yes. free yes. it's crazy if you look at the comments and this is then you know if you see that right yes. it makes it makes your you know makes yeah. you happy in yeah, a way yeah. right it's you crazy. feel like you're living your purpose in a way yeah 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 exactly this is a purpose yeah. absolutely i fully yeah. agree and and uh, there's a question that uh, probably i had asked you earlier on you know offset and uh, i had asked actually do you genuinely think that the information that has actually been put out there on youtube uh, about trading do you think it's enough you know to kick start someone's career well to to kick start m maybe so first of all, yeah, yeah. Um, as you know, I'm new to the YouTube bubble. Yeah. So I was shocked when I saw that YouTube, the content that is on YouTube, yes. like it's horrible. Like it's when it comes to trading, it's yes. like it's really so scammy, and it's mm -hmm. like uh, it's it's just horrible, right? Mm -hmm. um, most of it to kickstart somebody's career, to get interested, to get like a basic terminology, okay, okay. basic understanding. Mm -hmm. YouTube is a good place to start, okay. right? Mm -hmm. But really to Somebody, I, I've never met a person in my entire career who mm -hmm. says, I'm a self-taught trader who learned on YouTube and I'm like consistently profitable for wow. like years. It wow. doesn't exist. It doesn't so exist. I, 
and maybe you agree with me for mm -hmm. everything in life you need like for every profession you need somebody to mentor someone, you in a, a mentor way. right yes, like yes. the keyword here is you need a, a mentor True. right you need yeah. like a person regardless in which field right mm -hmm. yeah. it's like you cannot just say hey I, I became a, a, a brain surgeon, mm -hmm. you know, from watching a YouTube video, right? <laughs> People would run away, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> you don't want to operate yeah. on my brain. Uh, yeah. You watch only YouTube videos or I run away. I, I But know. with traders, like, they're, they're mm -hmm. all self-taught for mm -hmm. some reason. Right? How was your journey, you know, when it comes to, you know, getting a mentor? How yeah. did you, you know, wrap around it? Because some, some people really struggled with it. Yes, yeah, some people really struggle with it. And back in the days when I started more than 12 years ago, obviously it was a little bit different because mm -hmm. there was not much information out there on social media, not yes. comparable to today, like yeah. it's day and night, right? Mm -hmm. So I did everything in person. Everything everything was like basically in-person training, right? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I, I reached out to somebody who mm -hmm. like I got to know from somebody else. Mm -hmm. And this, these people were like former, like really old school traders, older people who were like former floor traders mm -hmm. on the biggest exchange in the world mm -hmm. chicago mercantile exchange and new york stock exchange mm -hmm. so i learned from them firsthand wow. right mm -hmm. um this is what made my learning journey also rather smooth mm -hmm. compared to people today where mm -hmm. they kind of seek information everywhere yes. and they get so much different information yes. and they don't even know like it's like this huge puzzle mm -hmm. so many pieces and they have no idea how to put it together mm -hmm. Um, nowadays, you can learn it online, right? Because technology is so far advanced. Like, mm -hmm. if we do like a Zoom meeting, it feels almost like we are sitting next to each other. Yes. But the problem nowadays is rather find valuable, find the right information wow. versus like how to learn, right? Mm -hmm. It's more like finding the right information. But mm -hmm. again, this goes back to okay, find someone who shows their results, who is like, who is like kind of um, has a proven track track record, yes, right, who is yes. verified in a mm -hmm, way, mm -hmm. um, who is transparent. And if you have like this checklist with mm -hmm. everything what I just said, mm -hmm. there's only a handful of traders who can do that. Yes. Right? And when it comes to, you know, uh, trying to get a mentor, what are some of the things that, you know, probably I can look at or someone who's watching can actually look and say, you know, this would be a good mentor? So first of all, in terms it's important the technicals that i just mentioned right mm -hmm. it has to be like a credible person right mm -hmm. trustworthy mm -hmm. has to show like a proven track record all of that that's like on a technical side yeah but i think it's also important when it comes to looking for a mentor mm -hmm. that you kind of uh, align with this person in terms of value that you are on the same yes. page right okay. that you're like you don't want to have a mentor where you think what an a hole <laughs> yeah. right you want to yeah. have a person that you look up to right okay. like you want to have somebody that hey, I want to be at his level at some point of time. Wow. This is, I think, really important when you look for a mentor. And then also when it comes to, like, because we talk about this niche trading, mm -hmm. what I always tell people, it's important, hey, even if that, per like, let's assume this, so we have to, we can classify trading into two things, right? Mm -hmm. Into mm -hmm. two sub categories mm -hmm. which is day let's call it day trading and let's call it swing trading, like yes. shorter term trading and longer term approach. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're like a, If you're like a family father, right, and you mm -hmm. have like a long day, a nine to five job, you mm -hmm. go out in the in the morning, 7 a.m., mm -hmm. you come back 8 p.m., you have family, mm -hmm. you have social obligations, maybe you want to go to gym as well, mm -hmm. and you barely don't have a lot of time. Yes. Well, but if you're looking up to a mentor who is day trading, mm -hmm. maybe it's still not the right person because this trading strategy sure. doesn't fit into your lifestyle. Yeah. So the last layer is really important also to understand that The person that you're looking up to, the way how he trades has to fit into your lifestyle as well. Because again, if you're like busy 24-7, then you're not able to day trade, sure. right? So yeah. and vice versa, obviously, as well. So these are the layers basically you should look when you go for look for Yeah, it. before we, we, we continue this conversation, there is a very interesting question that uh, I had, you know, uh, someone just talk about. And I'd really love to know your opinion on this. Yes, please go ahead. Do you think scalpers are gamblers oh yes 100 scalpers so i i always make this bold statement and it's actually not a bold statement i have so many statistical records that show that yeah so you cannot achieve consistency with scalping you cannot become a long-term consistent trader with scalping full stop yeah. scalping is i don't want to say scalp so, so uh, I once said scalping is a scam. I don't want to say scalping is a scam, but mm -hmm. you cannot achieve, you can make money with scalping, yes, but yes. it's not about making money. It's about consistent results month over month mm -hmm. over month. 
So scalping, you cannot achieve that. You can just not achieve that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and plus, scalping has its limitations when it comes to scaling your capital. Mm -hmm. Look, I manage four million, so I manage four millions in capital. No investor in the world wants me to take oh. like $40,000 of risk like on a one I minute know, right? chart and losing it. It's I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So it has its limitations with obviously with scaling up capital. It's yes. important. It's, it, it's, it's um, not possible to scale up capital. Mm -hmm. Plus you cannot achieve this long term consistency that you are seeking as a trader. Mm -hmm. Can you randomly make money? Absolutely. But you can ra randomly make money just by closing your eyes and pressing the buy and sell button. You know, it's just, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. but it's about consistency and you mm -hmm. cannot. So yes, I would, if you want to say like, it's a little bit of a scam. Yes. So um, in a way it is a scam because you cannot achieve long term. Consistency. Wow. Thank you for that. And also in the trading field, uh, one of the things that I've actually uh, been able to realize is that people are coming up with systems that probably they use to analyze the markets, mm -hmm. to read the charts. And of course, they help them, you know, in knowing when is the right time to enter the market, when is the right time to exit the market. And talking of all these now, there has been the bots that are also in the field. <laughs> what do you have to say about them? Oh, this is another very good discussion, right? Yeah. Bots, besides scalping, bots are the biggest scam in the industry, right? Wow. So Im just imagine that mindset. Now, trading is something that is notoriously difficult. Obviously, yes. you need skill, right? Mm -hmm. You need to develop years of skill to achieve consistency in the market. Yes. Now, imagine now, there's me selling you this bought for $50 that mm -hmm. apparently just by pressing the button can achieve all of that what I just mentioned right <laughs> so magically solves all your problems in the yes. world and makes consistent income and you don't even have to be skilled yes. you just have to press the button hey and I sell it to you for $50 yes how does it sound like to you it just sounds like a scam it sounds like that's what yeah. it is like so people should really like shift their mindset to like I always tell people use a little bit of common sense. What I just did, like, it was just using common sense, yes, right? Yes. I mean, there's no system out there that m system out there that magically generates you money without you having skill. It doesn't exist full stop. And everybody who's selling that shit is like a s scammer, right? Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Now let's talk about <laughs> the fact that uh, you are uh, an all-time, you know, FTMO record holder. Record holder. Yeah. The first question that comes to any trader, you know, is like, what, what was your strategy? Like, <laughs> do you have a strategy that, you know, you say that I'm going to do this, I'm going to follow this for the past one and a half years that made you be, you know, yes, the record so, holder? Um, well, it took me time to... So developing a strategy is also like a process, right? Yes. It's like you evolve as a person, you evolve as a trader and you become better at a trader and you, your strategy becomes more like mm -hmm. robust in a way throughout okay. the years. Mm -hmm. So I basically marry the best of both worlds, right? I combine the best of both worlds. I combine fundamentals and I combine technical. So okay. I use my fundamentals. Basically, I also de develop my own tools, my own mm -hmm. fundamental tools mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. basically anticipate the next market move, mm -hmm. which are based on fundamentals to get a bias in the market. Mm -hmm. So my bias this is my, that's why I call it a two-step mechanical process. My mm -hmm. first step, looking at my fundamentals to get bias in the market. Mm -hmm. Am I going to be bullish, bearish, bearish or neutral, bearish, right? right? If I'm neutral, I don't have an edge, I'm staying away. So, yeah. If I'm bullish or bearish, I go to step two, which is are my technicals. I time the market to place my entry, stop loss, mm -hmm. and my target, obviously. And there I use technicals. And for technicals, I use supply and demand. Mm -hmm. But for technicals, you know, the fundamental bias, you mm -hmm. know, knowing the direction of the market is mm -hmm. way more important sure. than, you know, mm -hmm. using like the technicals to time the markets. Mm -hmm. This is just there to get a proper risk to reward proposition on a mm -hmm. trade. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, first and foremost, so that's why I use both. So fundamentals drive, by the way, it's also important for the people to understand, I guess, that mm -hmm price so that's why people use usually technicals only right to anticipate yes. movements yeah. but price cannot drive price this is a misconception okay. fundamentals drive price and then the technicals you use to time the markets because fundamentals are lacking in market timing so that's why i use both basically fundamentals and technicals to basically get my edge in the markets and mm -hmm. then i use futures right the underlying yes. asset to analyze everything so oh. my years of experience you know like fine-tuning uh, fundamentals technicals futures this is just gives me that overall big edge in the market that people don't have that just look at maybe sometimes one market just technicals and then yes. only forex like i don't believe you can have an edge with that mm -hmm. as it been would you say it has been 
a one man job you know have you been doing this all alone no I, yeah i mean i'm taking away the credit from my team so <laughs> <laughs> i'm taking away the yeah. credit from my team so um like the tools we develop we have somebody who developed like i'm not a coding i, I, yeah. I cannot code right <laughs> yeah. i'm just explaining like my 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 developer basically this is what i would like to have in my tool basically in any code like this is like a long process it took mm -hmm. us years to develop the tools that we have right mm -hmm. now right mm -hmm. so no it's like it's not only me it's the entire team who kind of developed that in a way right but mm -hmm. um yes i would take the credit away from them if i just said oh i did everything by myself it's not true okay as a trader how important would you say is backstead uh, uh back, back testing, testing yeah, yes back testing how important would you say it is when it comes to you know analyzing Good whatever question. you're doing um i think back testing is a little bit overrated yeah yes um what is way more important is front testing in a way right okay, <laughs> just okay. tra yes. trade yourself and uh -huh. get sample size because uh -huh. i always also say past performance is not indicative to future results okay right in a way so that's why if you have a strategy let's assume you develop a strategy okay and you develop so this is the foundation of every trader. So mm -hmm. you develop a strategy, mm -hmm. then you create a trade plan, basically mm -hmm. a checklist that you follow, right? Mm -hmm. Because you want to be mm -hmm. um, as mechanic as, as possible. You mm -hmm. don't want to you want to be objective. You cannot mm -hmm. be subjective as mm -hmm. a trader. So you develop your checklist, and then you basically front trust by just taking trades, taking ten trades, twenty trades, thirty trades, forty trades, right? And then you lock all these trades yeah. and you journal all these trades. It's also part of your job as a trader. And then when you do all of that. Then you have a proper sample size of trades that you took yourself mm -hmm. where you see is your strategy working is it not working where can i tweak it to improve it and so on and so forth so this is way more important than you know looking at some historical data that you know yeah wow interesting take us through maybe uh, your trading process uh, right now you have uh, four million in funding right four million in funding and yeah yeah, yeah. now uh, what, what 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 is the percentage that you take for the risk so uh so two things so what i want to add so mm -hmm. so i'm four million in funding and right now on my youtube channel i do like a 2.1 million dollar yeah, the challenge, challenge yes. right I that's, do like that's away from the four million four million so if i pass <laughs> it i would have 6.1 million so okay. no pressure on me yeah, here <laughs> yeah, okay. no um but i again i'm doing something that has never been done in the industry before mm -hmm. i'm doing that 2.1 million dollar challenge mm -hmm. all publicly i'm calling okay. these trades all on youtube for all the viewers yeah. so they can basically copy these trades mm -hmm. um, we don't want to get into copying this has its limitations as yes. well but basically i'm doing this to show transparency again mm -hmm. setting new standards in the industry mm -hmm. and um so i would so right now i'm taking so the risk that i'm taking per trade is one percent basically right one percent, one percent per t imagine four million dollars one percent is forty thousand dollars right true my aim is to achieve right and by the way this has something this is tied to risk to reward okay. risking one in order to make two so this is my recommendation for all traders out mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. it's always risking one in order to make to, in order to make two right mm -hmm. if you risk a hundred dollars you should make two hundred dollars if yes. you risk a thousand dollars you should make two thousand dollars so my point is that you have sh should a goal as a trader your kpi so key performance indicators yes. your goal should be on average per month you should achieve two hours like risk one you achieve two right okay. so two per month on average mm -hmm. and throughout the year two times 12 you should achieve 24 hours right that should wow. be your that should be your key performance indicator mm -hmm. if you achieve that you just scale up your business and then you make you can make a lot of money imagine now me okay now going back to the four million i risk one which is one percent in this case yeah. to make two per month right yes, yeah. forty thousand dollars times two it's eighty thousand yes. per month. So yes. times twelve, right? You get the point where I'm yes, going. If I, I want to make more money, I don't take more risk. I just scale up my capital, yes. right? Yes. I but I but I stick to the same risk parameters. This is really important. I always stick to the one percent. Mm -hmm. And if you can make these two percent a month, mm -hmm. right, with that one percent risk, if you want to make more money, do, do, don't start. Oh, now I want to make more money. I risk two percent. No, you get more capital. Wow! Right, and this is so good with with prop trading, right? Because yes. you can easily scale up because you do another prop firm challenge. You yes. add another prop firm, right, yes. to your to your portfolio, and yeah. you can do and almost endlessly do that, right? Yeah. For me, it has a cap, but for the mainstream out there, there's you can do this, you know, mm -hmm. as as much as you want, as long as you want. <laughs> 
speaking of social media we've actually seen uh the traders per se the influencer traders mm. you know saying that you know in a day or two i can flip your ten thousand dollar account to thirty thousand to twenty thousand mm. uh and the questions that i have would be one uh is it possible uh two how high is the risk and three uh do you think this is part of us come so let me start backwards so 100% mm-hmm. it's a scam it's a full scam right yeah. there are no opinions about that that's mm-hmm. a full scam mm-hmm. first is it possible absolutely it is possible mm-hmm. but it's only possible if i take so much risk mm-hmm. that i'm every on every single trade mm-hmm. on every single day i'm risking to wipe out the entire account wow. so is that sustainable absolutely not and that's why it's a scam maybe you can do it once maybe you can do it twice but mm-hmm. ultimately mm-hmm. i can give it to you signed on a piece of paper mm-hmm. you're going to wipe out everything so that's mm-hmm. why it's a scam. have you ever tried it no you've never mm-hmm. tried to flip an account I've never tried to flip an no I've never tried to flip an account. I think people do that in ch- just on a general note I think people who are having lack in capital, lack in capital, right? Okay. Undercapitalized yeah. and they're trying to you know like flip a $500 account because that's maybe all their money they ha- have and then mm-hmm. you know they're trying a way mm-hmm. out. It's always the problem why people do that is because they're chasing the money right yes. they're chasing the money mm-hmm. but this is they're not trading then it's a gambling right mm-hmm. because trading is a profession where you have to focus on process it's mm-hmm. completely process based mm-hmm. skilled process based and then you know when once you follow the process money is just the result money is always just the result in trading from following the process properly right okay. that's just money is just the end a product the product yeah from wow. from following the process yes. but if you just St- take the money first and you don't skip everything else then it gets into you go to a casino and you know like uh yeah. you're sitting on f- at the f- at the, at the slot machine yeah and let's also let's hoping for luck it's l- l- luck luck it's luck. just luck yeah okay hoping Let, for luck yeah. yeah let's also talk about uh something that i also see other influencer traders do and i mean they they tell you you know i i'm doing account management mm. and once i do account management uh I, you'll get 50% profit i'll get 50% mm-hmm. do you think it's it, it, it's something that could work uh, for 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 new people in the forex industry i mean one might argue and say you know it's it's close to the same uh, it's close to whatever you know prop farms are doing you know you know they're giving you money then you, you're getting a percentage of it would do, what do you what do you have to say about yeah that? theoretically like it might work but mm-hmm. again you need to find somebody who like can manage your capital and manage your money mm-hmm. and this person has to be like a long term track record mm-hmm. right again you there are not many people out there who can show you like a long term track record mm-hmm. right like think about one of the trading influencers that you know can they show you if they ask you hey can you give me a verified statement over 6 months 6 months most probably not like there are not many right you don't know maybe i don't think you know a handful of them right yeah. because i don't know a handful of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah and true. if i don't know a handful of them then uh, nobody wow. else knows a handful like yeah. not many people know a handful of them yeah so it's theoretically possible but again it's like i firmly believe that the only person that can make you rich in your life is yourself wow right mm-hmm. and people who go for Oh let me find somebody who manages my funds. Mm-hmm. Let me find that magic bot. Mm-hmm. Let me find that XYZ. Mm-hmm. Well, at the end of the day, you are like you can only make yourself rich. And how do you do that? By developing skill. And this takes time like in any other profession. There's no overnight success. Yes, this is so stereotypical what I'm saying, but it's mm-hmm. true. It's not mm-hmm. cliché, it's true, right? Yes. In any other business it's the same way. When it comes to money, people already start losing all of a sudden start losing common sense in a way yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. When, when we're talking to you and uh, you know the audience is probably you know hearing us say that uh, you are an all time ftmo world record holder some might think that you know you are always having winning streak winning streaks is is that always the case no obviously, obviously not so in trading you have winners and losers right yeah. and the losers is the cost of doing business is by the way in trading you don't have any other costs right if you if you look at any other business right yeah. as a youtuber you have so many costs right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy yeah it's crazy right yeah, yeah. In trading you don't have costs mm-hmm. the only costs are your losers that's the cost of doing business wow. right mm-hmm. so in general i would say for like short term traders um short time like short time frame traders like day traders a 50 50% win rate right 50% losers 50% mm-hmm. uh, winners is like 
something that they first have to achieve. So that's like a goal, like a 50-50 win rate. Okay. Even like a 40-60 win rate is mm -hmm. good. So less, actually less winners and more losers. And you can still be... Po you can still be profitable mm -hmm. through risk to reward, right? Yes. That we discussed. If you, on your 40% winners, mm -hmm. if you risk one in order to make two, two. you will be just by default, yeah. just profitable. Yeah. So trading has nothing to do with like being perfect. It's mm -hmm. about these two KPIs, mm -hmm. key performance indicators, your risk to reward ratio versus your win loss ratio. And with like 50%, 50%, 40% win rate with a proper risk to reward ratio, mm -hmm. you can be profitable as hell, right? Oh. If you stick to these two KPIs mm -hmm. and you focus on your risk to reward ratio mm -hmm. on trading, right? Yes. That's just how it is trading. Right? How do you handle situations where you find that, you know, probably you're having some losing streaks? I don't have losing streaks. You don't? No, um, because of, I don't have, like, I really don't have losing streaks. And this is, I firmly believe this is, because of my approach, wow. because I'm using the fundamentals to get a bias. And yes, if you're like a short-term trader mm -hmm. and you use only technicals, mm -hmm. results in the, your results in the market are random. Meaning, even if you have a 50-50%, a 50% win rate, mm -hmm. if you, and you take 100 trades, mm -hmm. they are ran these winners and losers in the marketplace, they are randomly distributed. Meaning, it doesn't work like, Win, loss, win, loss, win, yes, loss. It yes. doesn't work like that. It's yes, like yes. you might have five winners, but then you have 10 losers, okay. right? Because results are random in the financial market. You're just following chart patterns. Mm -hmm. Everybody who disagrees doesn't know what they are speaking about. So results are random. So that's why people have these losing streaks. Mm -hmm. And then people get discouraged by their losing streaks. They might change their strategy, might change their approach, and so on and so forth. And then they never will achieve consistency. Mm -hmm. And, you know, since I'm trading, doing swing trading, I'm using fundamentals to get a bias, you know, all my years of experience, mm -hmm. again, using higher time frame charts. This, I, I can't remember when I had, like, three losers in a row. I just, I literally can't wow. remember. And this is, like, my verified track record shows all of that. Like, wow. it's crazy, yeah. How many trades do, would you say you place per se in a week? One or two. One or two? Yeah. So that's, On average. That's like uh, four to eight in a, in a month. Yeah. Wow, that's that's interesting. Like maybe six, seven on a month. Six, yeah, yeah, six uh, or uh, seven. Uh, yeah. And all all of these, uh, you're you you're, you're you're doing them on the on the finance accounts, or you have you know you're you're doing them in also different accounts. All in my like, uh, well, all in my prop firm accounts, right? Oh, yeah. And like, it's not only one; there are multiple prop firm accounts. So mm -hmm. I basically do my analysis, and then I place these trades manually in all these prop firm accounts, right? Mm -hmm. This takes the most time, you know. Wow. This takes the most time now, especially with the challenge that I'm doing on YouTube. Yes, yes. This two point one million dollars is across mm -hmm. six prop firms. Mm -hmm. So imagine I have to place all these trades manually. Mm -hmm. Yes, people are saying, "Why don't you use like a copy trader?" This somehow work, but these are also different. This is very technical. Different platforms that mm -hmm. I have to place. So I like to do this manually. It's like because I'm trading less frequent, I can okay. do that manually. But funnily, this takes more time than the entire analysis process by wow. itself. Having, I mean, having a conversation with Band is actually, you know, denouncing many of the things that, you know, we are normally told by the so-called uh, influencer traders. I mean, are there some things that you, when you came into the social media, you know, as a trader, you're like, I didn't know about this. Is, it, is this even a thing? Like, you mean like something that adds value? Like you think like me coming, you, you're saying me coming to the social media space, mm -hmm. seeing something, wow, I didn't know about that. Yeah, I didn't know about this. I'm a trader, but this is new. Is, is, this, is this even real? It's more like, for me, it was more like, shit, there's so much nonsense on social media. I cannot okay. handle that. <laughs> Literally, I, I was yes. like, I cannot watch this. It's so cringeworthy. Yes. I cannot watch this nonsense. So mm -hmm. it's more like that. But yeah, so it's really like, if you're like, like me coming from trading all these years, mm -hmm. like outside that social media bubble, mm -hmm. social media trading, YouTube trading, it's like its own bubble by itself in a okay. way. Like okay. s things that happen on, on YouTube, mm -hmm. trading wise, doesn't exist in the real world, only exists in, in, on YouTube for whatever reason and stays in that wow. bubble. It's crazy. It's maybe to deceive like the new traders, you know, to like get them into like kind of a scheme. Or probably but for the views. For the views, like mm -hmm. a lot of like create the amount of nonsense I can just personally not watch. It's like horrible to me. Yeah. <laughs> so you've not, would, would you say you've seen a trader that is online and crushing it and you can say, you know, guys, this guy is a good guy. This guy knows what he's doing. Look, the, the person, the, all the people 
that I've been so far um, um, on pod. So when I went on my first podcast, mm -hmm. Abdallah, then Waka, now mm -hmm. I went to like another podcast with mm -hmm. Dan um, in London. So I only would go on podcasts when I see these people have results okay. through prop trading, for instance. Mm -hmm. So they have some verified results. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I would not speak to that. Uh, a person right mm -hmm. so when i basically go on somebody's podcast i know that this person has shown results in the prop firm space oh. i would not i, I don't want to call out names but yeah, yeah, there yeah. are a lot of people that if i get invited to a podcast for instance mm -hmm. i would not go to them because i know they are not credible people wow. so yes there are people out there and mm -hmm. the people that i speak to like mm -hmm. online that i they are have mm -hmm. some success in the social media space, mm -hmm. but uh, in the social in the trading space. Mm -hmm. But um, yes, so there are a few out there. Yeah. L let's let's now uh, dive into you know the pro farm trading. You know prop trading when where you get funded yes. to actually you know trade, and many people probably do not know about it. How does it work? So how does it work? So these are forex prop firms, right? Mm -hmm. And the, they, they are accessible for all retail traders out there, for everyone. Yes. So to get funded from these firms, mm -hmm. you need to do a test, right? Yeah. These are called, these tests are called challenges. challenges. Yeah. How to do these challenges? Usually these are two-step challenge, mm -hmm. cha challenges, mm -hmm. meaning you get from, let's assume you buy a $100,000 challenge mm -hmm. because later on you want to get funded $100,000, okay. right? By the way, this goes all the way down. You can buy a $5,000 challenge for okay. like $30, for instance, wow. right? So okay. for the low capitalized people, especially in Africa, this is now a great opportunity to get funded a high amount wow. because imagine... $30, you mm -hmm. pay for a challenge mm -hmm. and you get funded $5,000. Trading all of, the, yeah. all of a sudden $5,000 will make a huge impact for a lot of traders in Africa sure. out there, right? Yeah. So you go through, do you do these challenges and these challenges basically, you have to trade on a demo account, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And in these demo accounts, you have to achieve a certain return on investment. Okay. There's usually no time limit and the, 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 the the uh, return on investment that you have to achieve is between 8% and 10% usually. Okay. So with your trades, you have to achieve 8% or 10% return, right? Okay. But then on the downside, there are drawdown limits. Mm -hmm. You cannot go lower or there's usually a daily drawdown and it's 5% and a max drawdown and it's 10%. Okay. So if you go, if you, on a day, if you, if you lose 5%, you lose the account, right? Mm -hmm. If you, and throughout that challenge, if you lose 10%, you lose the account. Okay. But the good thing is you can buy a new challenge okay. and you can buy a new challenge. Yes. There's no limit on buying challenges, yes. right? Yes. But this is the test, basically. Mm -hmm. This is called, as you said, the mm -hmm. challenge. Yes. And once you pass this challenge, let's assume it's 10%, you have to achieve 10%, you achieve the 10%, and then you get actually funded. Wow. And you can do this as many times as you want with as many problems as you want. And, and that's how you can scale up your business, right? Your funds. Wow. So once, you, when, once they start funding you, uh, uh, does the funding keep on increasing based on your performance? I would actually personally not rely on that. Mm -hmm. What I would do is, and this is how I do it, right? Mm -hmm. Once you see like you can achieve consistent results with your funded account, mm -hmm. then just buy another channel challenge, okay, right? Like, okay, okay. And there's them, for instance, FTMO. Like, I'm, by the way, what, what is important to me, I'm not affiliated with any prop firm, right? Yes. I'm just mentioning FTMO because yeah. I'm like the all-time record holder. Mm -hmm. But very important to me is like I have no affiliation with mm -hmm. any prop firm. Yeah. You can use any prop firm that you want, right? Yeah. I don't recommend any. Mm -hmm. So, but with FTMO, for instance, there's a $400,000 cap. So you yeah. can get funded until you reach $400,000, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and if you achieve that, what they call max allocation, then mm -hmm. you're funded $400,000. Mm -hmm. If you want to get funded more, then you go to the next prop firm and do the same process. Okay. And this is how I achieve, you know, the $4 million and, you know, do like two, now two, $2.1 million in yeah. challenges. Mm -hmm. A $2.1 million mm -hmm. challenge is not on one prop firm. It's on six prop firms, right? So wow. that's how you basically scale up by just doing more challenges across different prop firms and mm -hmm. achieving more funding through these different prop firms. Yeah. Uh, the four million, uh, four million uh, world record. I mean, it's quite high. Are you looking at hitting ten, five? Good that you say. Like, um, I I don't have in general. I don't have monetary goals, right? Okay. I have more like intrinsic goals. But mm -hmm. at some point, to say I'm the only eight-figure funded prop trader in the world mm -hmm. sounds nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That, that's so ten great. million is like, but it's not a must, right? It's mm -hmm. not like chasing that ten million. It's stupid, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it, it would be nice, right? It's like, yeah, why not? Wow. Quite interesting. Uh, as we wind up, probably maybe 
what are some of the things that you've learned, you know, over the past years of being a full-time trader, that is 10 years, that you are saying, you know, if I had known this when I was starting, probably I would be far away, you know? Yes, um, don't be money-focused. Wow. Right? <laughs> it's, it, I know, I, I always say that, right? Mm -hmm. Don't be money-focused, focus on your process. Because mm -hmm. as we said, money is just a result mm -hmm. from following the process, mm -hmm. right? But once you get money-centered in a way, right? Mm -hmm. you ch you're chasing price, you're chasing money, you're getting greedy, mm -hmm. right? You're trading for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. You should not never trade for the materialistic things. Mm -hmm. You should trade to become successful, right? To become consistent in your approach. But this can only happen once you're like, process oriented and the yes. money is just a result it's wow. just a result wow. right so that's why people i know it's it's easy easy said and hard you know it took me years to understand that whatever number i have in my head i should get rid of and just follow <laughs> the process because the money will follow just by default okay. if you follow the process okay. so that's i think the biggest lesson also that i want to give to new traders mm -hmm. that to start chasing the process because it's a process game at the end of the day right wow the, the, the money example you gave, would you say it is also one of the biggest mistakes that you made when you started, you know, following the money? Yes, 100%. Like, it, as a beginner, you always follow the money, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> because true. Because you see the numbers, you know, on your screen coming, going back and up. You're so fascinated by the money, by the quick money, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But this is just coming and going, and this is not sustainable. Like, this is, yes, I would. But as a beginner, and this is then you slowly um, evolve as a trader where you feel like, okay, if you change this approach to more like process oriented and mm -hmm. not too much money centered, mm -hmm. this is when you get better. Okay. I had asked you also this question earlier on, and I believe it's a, it's a question maybe someone who's watching would find valuable in terms of the answer that you gave. Uh, how long did it take you to start making profits consistently? Uh, again, this is also a yeah, very good question because um, I don't want to take myself as a benchmark and yes. I never say like, it, take, it took me X amount of years or it took me X amount of months because mm -hmm. it's for everybody is different. Everybody has different circumstances. We are all like our own individuals, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really matter how long it really takes you. Of course, it takes time like any other profession, right? To mm -hmm. see like your first YouTube success, it takes time, right? Yes, <laughs> that's true. It all takes everything we do in life everything that is worthwhile mm -hmm. takes a lot of time, right? Yes, yes. And same with trading. So, And we all want to trade for the rest of our life. I yes. want to trade for the rest of my life. Yeah. So whether now it takes you, you know, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What matters is, and this is what people anyway fail, is like um, uh, being the perseverance, disciplined, following rules, you know, like mm -hmm. all these key trades this yes. is where people are missing yes. and look think about it today a thousand people start with trading yes after three years you have maybe only 100 <laughs> left yeah, that's true. right yeah. and then after three years again you have maybe 10 left that's true and that's why time is your friend the more time you spend in terms of discipline mm -hmm. and you know uh, be persistent with things mm -hmm. you know you will be one of 10 only in like in a long in, in, in like uh, in the long run so I think that's a goal to like achieve one hundred percent. Wow, crazy! I've been having a conversation with Band, and I mean, I've loved the conversation. Thank you so I much. hope you <laughs> also love the conversation uh, back at home or wherever you're watching this from. I want to know this: what is the biggest uh, financial advice that you've ever learned as a trader? Uh, yeah, invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. This is like the. You have depreciating assets, you have appreciating assets. Investing in yourself is the most appreciate, appreciating asset that, that exists, right? Wow. Invest in yourself and it will pay you the biggest returns in the long run. Wow. Maybe your last uh, sentiment to the viewer, talk to the viewer who's watching from wherever they are. Yes, yeah, so um, as I said before, um, if you start with trading, look for the right mentor, look for people who are credible, who can show you results, don't fall into the trap of all these scammers and use a little bit of common sense. And then again, time is your friend because the more time you spend in front of the chart, you better become as a trader. And this is a, you know, I know this is a cliche, but trading is a sprint. Uh, it's, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, yeah, right? Yeah. It's a cliche, but that's true, right? It takes time to develop that skill. So take yourself time. You have all the time in the world. Find the right mentor. Be process-oriented, not money-focused. And then in the long run, you will get success. 
Wow, thank you so much, Band. Thank you really so much. You oh, my pleasure. That was I amazing. really enjoyed the call, uh, the, 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 the conversation. The conversation. Yeah, yes. thank you so much, thank uh, you. Uh, also for coming. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for watching the video. And if you are really interested, you know, in joining uh, Forex, I've actually put the link to my recommended bro broker, FX Pesa, on the link in the description. I've also pinned it in the comment section. So please sign up and you know start your journey in trading. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, have a good day, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye, guys.